Am I a money service business? I get that question about like three or four times a week, okay? And so let's let's read this, all right? Money transmitter includes any person who engages as a business in accepting currency or funds denominated in currency and transmits the currency or funds or the value of the currency or funds by any means through a financial agency or institution or any other person engaged as a business in the transfer of funds. So right off the bat, okay, your money transmitters, right, which are your exchanges, are money service businesses, right? And that includes bid tracks, okay? Mm-hmm. There's a lot of questions. Well, if I don't, if I don't accept, if I don't accept fiat, do I have to get a license? Bittrex has all their licenses. Just because they don't accept USD doesn't mean that they don't need the license because they're engaged in the transfer of funds denominated in currency, right? So they denominate things in Bitcoin and they denominate it as a like a quotient of a dollar, right? So, you know, out of abundance of caution, and you can make the arguments, and Bittrex started out not having the license. You can make the argument that you don't need the license, but out of an abundance of caution, like poorly dressed lawyers and bad tweet suits would tell you like when you're writing a will or something like that you need the license you need the license and that that's that's not me trying to help the you know help the the uh the community of lawyers with with fees it's just the best route to go especially in this environment and i think clearly the money service business aspect of it denominates that you are a money service business and if you sort of look at it transitively then you are in fact acting as a money transmitter and we need the state the state level license. Now, if you're providing some sort of service with respect to going in and out of a particular coin, that may be a a, a different a different dog altogether. So if you have a let's say you, you develop a token, that token's for your platform, and people can go in and out of that token for purposes of utilizing that platform like think of a ICO utility token that wouldn't be a money service business right that wouldn't be a money service business because you're not engaged in the transfer of those funds that's just an antecedent to what you're trying to do with your particular platform right whether it's a mobile app a software game whatever it is when you're you're actively engaged right when those transfers right from that transfer to from fiat to token and back are antecedent or connected with the transfer of money between individuals, right? Even if you're using this the token as the medium of exchange, that then you are a money service business. You may not be a money transmitter because you may not be charging a fee for it, right? You may not be actively engaged in that, but if you're providing that service where people are able to effectively transfer money through you, right, and you're whether you use your token or you're using USD to do it, then I believe you are a money service business. And the process for registering as a money service business isn't inherently complex, right? It's a registration. It's not necessarily an application, right? Your money transmitter applications, if you wanted to get in all 50 states, may cost you about $85,000, right? There's 48 jurisdictions when you include the District of Columbia that have some sort of money transmitter sale of checks type license, right? And so you need to be wary of, of like that, that cost. Um, but, you know, when it comes to registering as a money service business, the process itself isn't terribly difficult. You don't necessarily need, you know, uh, assistance to even do it, you know, through an attorney. You could probably do it yourself. What the key out, uh, you know, implication is obviously then you have to, you have to embrace and develop a pretty robust AML KYC program for who you're dealing with, which you know, there's a lot of misconception amongst regulators as to whether that's possible in crypto. And of course it is possible, right? If you know anything about crypto, it's very possible to do KYC AML. And there's a lot of good third parties, myself included, that do that service and provide that service to, to third parties. So as it relates to money service businesses, obviously, if you're in exchange accepting fiat currency, absolutely, you are a money service business. If you're adopting the Bittrex license, you're still, you know, doing dollar denominated business. And I believe you're still a money service business. If you are, you know, a singular token or de facto currency and you're allowing for a transmission, I think, you know, you start to look like a money service business. And I think you have to consider the implication of not being a money service business, which can be criminal. Um, 
you know, and you see that example in, uh, you know, all the cases brought against users of local bitcoins, right? So, something to uh, something to definitely consider. But um, check me out, bitcoin-lawyer.org, at tracyfirm.com. If you have any questions, I'll talk to you later. Thanks.